Is this that academy?
Okay. <coughs> Western Court of Brazos County will re meet in regular session on September 17, 2024, 10 a.m. Commissioner's Courtroom, uh, Brazos County Administration Building, 200 South Texas Avenue, Suite 106. Public may watch the meeting uh, live on Facebook. Uh, Brazos County. This meeting will be conducted video conference with at least a quorum of the Commissioner's Court and members participating at the County Administration Building in accordance with the provisions set forth in Section 551.127 of the Texas Government Code. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, and Commissioner Berry will lead the with an invocation. Almighty, thank you for this day and the many abundant blessings you bestow upon us. Thank you for our forefathers who wrote our Constitution and the public servants who work hard every day to uphold it. Thank you to our first responders, our military men and women who serve at home and abroad, whose service allows us to enjoy the freedoms that we have. Thank you for our teachers and students. Please protect them all. Please protect our presidential candidates and our president and our public servants. We appreciate the opportunity to work for the people of Brazos County and hope that our actions are pleasing to you. We ask all this in your name. Amen. 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 And then uh, Lenora Orr will lead the U.S. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then Jane Cohen will lead the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. Second item on the agenda is to call for citizens' input and our concerns. And Kathy Beans. Kathy. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Happy Constitution Citizens Day. Um, okay, <laughs> sorry. I had a couple points I just wanted to bring up <clears throat> briefly. I, since there is no emergency plan for Election Day, hold, the holding of the Election Day proceedings, as far as uh, if there's interference with power or internet. I was wondering what the county commissioners have in mind. If there is an interruption in service, do we have um, emergency generators to provide to each of those locations? I would like to know what the process is going to be for that in case if that happens. Um, I wanted to ask that you put on the agenda to accept Dr. Doherty's offer to do a free uh, review of our election machines. He is, as you know, he's a national expert on election integrity and insecurity, and his services are highly valued in the, across the country, and he's offering it to do it as a resident of our county for free. And I would ask that you put that on the agenda and that you accept his offer. Um, I also noticed uh, in looking for the agenda for today's meeting that the financial reports on the county website go from October of 23 but they end in March. So I'm just wondering what happened to the other five months of the year, why they're not available. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Cindy Wiley. Morning, Judge and Commissioners. Last week, I experienced the death of my father. And in doing so, it makes you have a look back on your life. And you come to, I mean, everybody experiences their own reaction to it. But basically, you either sink or you swim, drowning in your sorrow. You realize life is short. 
and that we all leave a legacy. It's not about money, but you look back on how one cared for the people that they left behind. Last week, and this is in my humble opinion, what occurred in this body was a disregard for the people. Did we witness an alignment with the donor class? The Republicans are supposed to represent a platform to promote the individual rights over the government's stranglehold on the people. Did y'all accelerate the hardship and the decline of many middle class and low income residents of this county? Resources will continue to be drained with illegals invading our land. The jail population is six to, cent, six to 10 percent of illegals. The political rhetoric is so loud and constant. I attended the LNA test on Tuesday evening. There was so little transparency, I was so disappointed. Professor Holtzapple got yelled at for touching the equipment. His friend got yelled at for touching the equipment. And we were told that because we had spoken, that is why the vote count was off. Our EA said at least three times that when questions were asked of her that that was above her pay grade. So how confident does that make us? That the employees under the EA have more knowledge than our EA about the machinery. <clears throat> now I wanna step into something quickly. Last Saturday at the Hispanic Heritage that happened in Bryan, and I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but there was a booth that was set up of a political party, and it had a pinata. And the pinata was a presidential candidate male. We all know his name. And they were offering a bat and you could pay to whack the pinata in the head with the bat. And that is supposed to be promoting cultural appreciation for the Hispanic and Latino. Did you, did you guys know that went on? It needs to be addressed. That is just exactly what's going on in our country. Let's whack the crap out of what we don't like. That's all, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. But that was all for two. <clears throat> we'll move on to three, presentation and discussion. Presentation certificate by Chad Caperton, County Extension Agent. Uh, AG and Natural Resources, Texas a and AgriLife Extension Service, Bradley County, to Commissioner Chuck Connor on successfully completing Commissioner's Court uh, Leadership Academy Session 3. Good Chad. morning. Commissioner's Judge, good to see y'all. Good morning, Brazos Valley family. Um, we got a short presentation. Um, I want to introduce first Mr. Brock Sanford. He's here. He's going to be the new county extension agent for Galveston County, but right now he is a first step agent in Brazos County. He gets a one month crash course in extension and all things um, AgriLife <coughs> before jumping in the deep end in Galveston County. But uh, he's going to uh, be honored today to read this presentation and uh, then we'll hand out some certificates. So. Good morning, everyone. To the community members of Brazos County and the Brazos County Commissioner's Court, for more than 50 years, the V.G. Young Institute of County Government has served local governments in Texas. Since 2005, the Institute, a part of Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service, has offered the Commissioner's Court Leadership Academy, CCLA, to further enhance the professionalism 
broaden the knowledge, and enrich the experience of county judges and commissioners in Texas. CCLA involves four sessions over a two-year period, three three-day sessions in Texas counties, and one seven-day session in Washington, D.C. Presentations, workshops, discussions, and networking opportunities during these sessions guide participants through complex leadership topics. Topics are carefully selected and developed to be timely and relevant to county judges and commissioners. On behalf of the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service and the Brazos County Extension Office, we congratulate Mr. Chuck Condorla on successfully completing 15 hours in Commissioner's Court Leadership Academy Session 3. Sincerely, the Brazos County Extension staff. Thanks, bro. So it appears Commissioner Connor is a fast mover. As I was preparing for this, I just barely got the request in to get on the agenda. And we had a second certificate for session four come in. So we're actually going to present two of those certificates today. I was thinking maybe I didn't complete four like I thought I did. But <laughs> it's kind you, of a relief. To, hey, Brock, thank you. Well, Service don't you need to go down there and take pictures? Congratulations, Chuck. Thank you. Chuck, you've graduated? I've graduated. Yes, okay. ma'am. Congratulations. All right. <clears throat> we will consider and take action on agenda items 4 through 31. Number 4 is proclamation 24-19, proclaiming September 17th through the 23rd, 2024's Constitution Week. Move approval. Second. Um, motion made seconded. Uh, that's... Uh, We've got one that wanted to speak on it first, Diane Breeding. Good morning. Oh dear, here we go again. It's a thing with me, sorry. I'm shy, I can't uh, help it. Okay, you, you move the microphone down. down so you can speak into it. I don't have to stand on my tiptoes? No. Oh, okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so today is U.S. Constitution Day, and I'm so glad that we have a proclamation. That's awesome that we're being, it's being acknowledged. I'm hoping that perhaps next year we'll be able to in, have a, a little bit larger celebration countywide to, to truly recognize the importance of the day. And I think along those lines, it's also important to remember that it was the, that day was the, the final signing of the Constitution by the Congress. And it had taken many years for them to come to a consensus. So as such as the way of government, we have a lot of different opinions and approaches on things, as I'm sure you're aware since you conduct these citizen hearings. The other thing that's going on this week is National Only Vote Citizens Vote Week. And there is a national coalition that is concerned about non-citizens voting. And I am just here to ask what we're doing in this county to remove non-citizens from the voter rolls and to institute a process on an ongoing basis. I know that our fine governor, uh, things have been done at the state level but I am unaware of what is being done locally and I haven't been reassured as a voter myself. Thank you so much. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We haven't voted. Have we voted? No. no. All in favor say aye. 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 And motion carries. So, Jane, you and the come on up.
I'll read the contract. Y'all come over. Whereas September the 17th, 2024, marks the 237th anniversary of drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorial anniversary and to the patriotic celebration which will commemorate the occasion, and whereas Public Law 9. 15 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States designating September 17th through the 23rd, 2024 as Constitution Week. Now therefore be it proclaimed that Brazos County Commissioner's Court does hereby proclaim the, the week of sep September 17th through 23rd, uh, 2024 as Constitution Week and urges our citizens to reaffirm the ideas which framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by diligently uh, protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through the guardians of our liberty, remembering the lost rights that, that may never be regained, and to express get gratitude a privilege, uh, and the privilege of being an American in the Republic which functions under the oldest constitution still active in use today. Proclaimed the 17th day of September 2024. I think one of the most important words that Judge just said was lost rights cannot be regained. And hopefully all of the citizens of Brazos County and this great state of Texas will continue to protect our freedoms to allow us to agree and to disagree in a lawful manner according to this fantastic document, 237 years since the Constitutional Convention when it was signed in convention. Yeah, we ought, we ought to get a picture. Y'all come up to the front. Somebody needs to take care of us, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's Jane's first rodeo. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you. <clears throat> we voted on that, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, number five is approval of appointment of uh, Lewis Clink Scale, the Bradshaw County Emergency Services District ESD number three, unexpired term of uh, Bill Milberger, ending December 31, 2024. Move for mm -hmm. approval. Second. Motion made seconded. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None motion carries. Number six is consider and take possible action on a county burn ban. And Jason, come up and give us an update. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Jason Ware, Deputy Emergency Management Coordinator for Brazos County. Uh, we continue on the emergency management side of monitoring the, the situation as far as how dry it is, the, the fire department responses and such. Uh, as of today, our drought index numbers um, as, a, as a county average, we're at 633. Um, the maximum uh, numbers that we have are at 700 on, 700 on the dot, and that's a very small portion of Brazos County. And the minimum side is actually a 472 because some areas are getting some showers in the evenings. Um, over the last seven days, um, the, uh, the numbers have increased a little bit overall from the last report, <coughs> but it's not, you know, astronomically high. Um, currently, we, as far as a fire danger um, on the range, two out of five right now. So we're at a, a moderate risk. So we're actually doing really well. 
uh, compared to what we were a year ago when we were in an exceptional drought for today. Um, it, looking at the U.S. drought index, a small portion of the west side of Brazos County has entered the uh, abnormally dry drought index, um, but the majority of the county is still in pretty good shape. Spoke with the, uh, the fire chiefs yesterday, three of the four are still um, wanting to monitor the situation and don't feel like we need a burn ban right now. Uh, their run, their grass fire calls are still um, on the low side and the ones that they've had been very small and easily controlled, no erratic fire behavior. Um, so uh, with the, uh, like I said, the fire chiefs, three of the four are still wanting to monitor week to week. Thank okay. You. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Just, well, unless, some, unless there were a motion to do something, I, I assume we will take no action on number six. Uh, can we just uh, put the uh, table that for next week and yeah. just continue we'll, to monitor the situation? Okay. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, number seven is approval requested by for the county judge to sign the CEO for <coughs> FY24 CEO LEO certification and assurances from the specialty court, drug court. Um, Move approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, number eight is approval of the following job descriptions. Move approval A through J. Second. Motion made seconded. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Number nine is approval of the amended Community Supervision and Corrections Department Interlocal Cooperation Contract for fiscal year 2025. Move approval. Second. Motion made seconded. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. <clears throat> Number 10 is approval of the following community support contract for FY 2025. Move approval A through H. Second. Motion made second in discussion. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 I'd like to abstain from B, but a, uh, vote in favor of A, uh, C through H. Okay. We've got that one abstention for B. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. Number 11 is approval of contract 24-119 for polygraph testing for juvenile uh, with Texas Polygraph Services. Move approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> None motion carries. Number 12 is appro approval of CIP 24648 end user agreement with equipment with D drone for Brazos County Sheriff's Office. Move approval. Second. Motion made second. And we've got two that wanted to speak on that. Uh, Kathy, <coughs> Kathy Beans. I think Mr. Brady is also speaking. To that. Yeah, there's. Could he go first? I, that'd be fine. Howdy and good morning. I'm Dr. Breeding. I was asked a few days ago to um, do an analysis of the doc in service in customer agreement with Dead Drone Holdings located in Sterling, Virginia, and the Brazos County Sheriff's Department. It's a pretty standard document on the proposal to operate drone detection equipment. Um, as I analyze this, and I have some comments here if anybody wants to see them. But my conclusion is the document does not give us any information on a project risk assessment, a project needs assessment, or any information on the requirements and conditions for, um, it would help if I put my glasses on, uh, does, not, uh, does not give us any information on the plans, goals, and objectives, and details of operating such a drone detection system. I have some specific questions. What is the strategic purpose of licensing such a drone detection system? What are the qualifications and training requirements for Sheriff's Department personnel? 
what are the personnel and facilities needs and the costs of such? What is the need, the justification for acquiring and operating a drone detection system? What are the benefits and risks to the citizens of Brazos County? And what are the impacts, the, what are the plans for federal FAA compliance? Uh, federal Aviation Administration has a very, very complex and strict <coughs> legal requirement for operating small unmanned aircraft and managing the safety and operations of such. And this would impact that. And anyway, my recommendations are to see the results of a quantitative risk assessment, an actual needs assessment for drone detection system, operational cost assessments, and personnel and facilities needs assessments. My qualifications for doing this analysis in 2017, I established the Drone Management Program for Safe Operations of Drones over Texas A&M University properties throughout Brazos County and throughout the state and as it turned out the world, we've successfully operated that without major incident since 2017. I did retire in May at the end of the spring semester and I'm very proud of the program we've established that's still going on under the administrator I trained. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to charge you. Do you want to speak to, to some of that? Uh, Judge Commissioners, the, the intent of this is to detect drones. It is not to fly drones. It is to limit the risk associated with people bringing contraband into the jail via open portions of the um, rec yards and so forth. So. Um, that it is not our intent that I'm aware of to fly drones as part of this program. It is simply to eliminate risk of people getting stuff into the jail. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> that was that was one of the needs. The potential that a drone. Speak up. I'm sorry. The potential that a drone could be used to drop contraband into an open area that an inmate would be allowed into later and be able to pick up that contraband. That's what this is. But it's also to keep drones from overflying the facility to uh, determine what our securities are, where our fences are, where our doors are, where our, where our potential weaknesses for an escape. So it, those are the two, as I understand it, main reasons we need a, uh, a drone system. It's not an anti-drone system. It just lets us know if somebody's trying to find, fly a drone over our property because there is no legitimate purpose for right. somebody flying a drone over our jail. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then, Kathy, did you want to? Okay. Um. <clears throat> Good questions, though. Mm -hmm. We did haven't we, voted. We need to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Number 13 is approval renewal contract for 25. Uh, dash 15 R for sex offender treatment provider with August Augustin uh, Gutierrez. Move approval. Second. Motion made. Seconded. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed. None. Motion carries. Number 14 is approval of contract 25 dash 022 for copier maintenance with Texas Document Solutions. Move approval. Second. Motion made. Second discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? No motion carries. Number 15 is approval of renewal of contract 25-023R for medical and health services with Joel Richards, DO, aka Doc Healthcare PA. Move approval. Second. second. Motion made. Second discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Number 16 is approval of renewal of bid 25-060R for asphalts, oil emulsions, and er ergon asphalts and, with, uh, and Cleveland asphalts. Move approval. Second. Motion made. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Uh, motion carries. Number 17 is request permission to, to enter private property owned by Mark and Mary Price uh, at 4587 Cricket Pass, Nantucket Subdivision. The county will clean and reshape the creek to achieve proper drainage of the, uh, of the road, roadway culvert sites located in Precinct 1. 
Move approval. Second. Motion page second in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Number 18 is request approval of acceptance of roads and roadway drainage structures in Reliance Ridge subdivision in Brazos County Road Maintenance System, sites located in Precinct 2. Move for approval. Second. Motion made to second in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Number 19 is consider and take action on Bryan, Texas Utilities permit to install utility pole, a guy wire, and aerial electrical crossing when uh, with the win within the right of way of Caraba Road, project will provide power for a new industrial uh, park. Sites located in Precinct 2. Move for approval. Second. Motion <coughs> made. Second. <coughs> Discussion. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. No motion carries. <coughs> 20 is consider and take action on Brazos Wi Fi utility permit to construct road bore under Greenleaf Lane, Rustic Oak subdivision to install a fiber optic cable for internet service like uh, sites located in precinct two. Move for approval. Second. Motion made to second it. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No motion carries. <clears throat> Number 21 is consider and take action on Brazos Wi-Fi utility permit to construct a road bore under Orange Cove Shady Grove subdivision to install fiber optic cable for internet service sites located in Precinct 2. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No motion carries. Number 22 is consider and take action on Brad's Wi-Fi utility permit to construct three road boards under Peach Tree Drive, Shady Grove subdivision to install fiber optic cable for internet service sites located in Precinct 2. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second to discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None motion carries. Number 23 is consider and take action on Brazos Wi-Fi utility permit to construct eight road bores under Rustic Oak Drive, Rustic Oak Subdivision to install fiber optic cable for internet service sites located in Precinct 2. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. <clears throat> Number 24 is consider and take action on Brass Wi-Fi utility permit to construct 11 road bores under Shady Lane, Shady Grove subdivision to install fiber optic cable for internet service sites located in Precinct 2. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No motion carries. Number 25 is considered to take action on Brass Wi-Fi utility permit to construct two road bores under Twin Creek Circle Rustic Oak subdivision to install fiber and op optic cable for internet service sites located in Precinct 2. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None of motion carries. <clears throat> Number 26 is considered to take action on Frontier Utility Permit to construct road bores under Imperial Loop and Calibration Court to install fiber optic cable in the inter uh, for internet service sites located in Precinct 4. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None motion carries. Number 27 is budget amendments. Budget amendments FY2324, budget amendments 48.01 through 48.07. Move approval. Second. second. Motion made seconded. And I see, I believe Kathy wanted to speak on that. I have a question about um, the amendment 4804, and it is $120,000 moving out of the hotel tax and $200,000 moving out of interest income into Kyle Field. And I was wondering if you could expound on what Kyle Field is getting $328,000 of county funds. I mean, I'm sure that's going to come from the hot funds that were dedicated. Yes. Uh, and two and two hundred thousand from interest. So, what are we doing with Kyle Field that we they need our money? If you look at the description mm -hmm. on the budget amendment, mm -hmm. it's for the venue tax, 
that we assess. We are doing the budget amendment now because the venue, the, taxes, the venue taxes, the venue tax mm -hmm. that we have an agreement with Kyle Field, money will continue to come in throughout September for that venue tax. That venue tax is then paid directly to Kyle Field. We are going ahead and recognizing the revenue we have received so that when the venue tax comes in, we can pay Kyle, we'll have enough budget to pay Kyle Field immediately instead of having to do a budget amendment first. Yeah, so that's it's hotel occupancy tax. Just there was a legislature passed a, 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 a law that allowed the county to collect an extra half percent hotel occupancy tax for anybody staying in a hotel several years ago. And that was when they were actually fixing to, to remodel and rebuild Kyle Field. And so they were looking for money and the legislature allowed it. We collect it because it's countywide. And then, but it's, it's dedicated for Kyle's Field. That's all it can be used for. And that's what, the, uh, that's why they're able to, the hotels are able to collect that extra half percent. And it's only for that. And that we're, we're a pass through. And any interest that's made off of that money as it sits there is goes to Kyle Field also, goes to a &M. Well, maybe it's something that we can stop yep. contributing for since I think they have enough money and they've done the repairs that it was initiated for. I think, I feel like A&M has a ton of money sloshing around and to redistribute county taxpayer funds there is maybe not necessarily something that we want to continue on a permanent basis. I know you're allowed to do it. I'm just saying it might be something. We so it's, it's to. not on taxpayers of Brazos County, unless you go stay in a hotel, it's not on taxpayers of Brazos County. It's all those who come in here and stay in a hotel and that's to pay off the debt that, that Texas A&M incurred. So just because I mean they're not through with it and may not be for 30 years I don't know it's so we're helping Kyle Field to pay their debt that's what you just so said did Katie's I understand that correctly Let's get Katie. it's a pass-through it's not it's not Brazos County it's a pass-through okay y'all just going to put up with it in hotel motel tax fund there are two types of tax there's the hotel motel tax <coughs> which is collected on from uh, the hoteliers in town when you stay. We keep that money and it's used for heads and beds if, um, out generally out at the expo. The other tax is the venue tax. The venue tax is 100% collected by the county but then 100% no interest okay. sent to Kyle Field. Or excuse me, not sent to Kyle Field. It's sent to Texas A&M to pay any debt they issued to rebuild Kyle Field several years ago, okay? So we're paying their, helping them to pay their debt. The taxes that we collect on their behalf go to a and We are merely a pass-through. And it's not property taxes. This has no, nothing. I understand that, but taxpayer, I mean, people that use it are, tax, are paying taxes. Are using that as a general category. Yes, the hoteliers are collecting the tax. Have we voted on it? No. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? On motion carries. Um, <clears throat> number 28 is personnel change status. Move approval A and B. Second. Motion made seconded discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Non motion carries. <clears throat> number 29 is payment of claims. Uh, Approval of payment claims 8205011 through 8205200 and uh, B is 9202237 through uh, 9202320. Move approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. We will skip down to number 32, and is, which is an acknowledgement of the 2023-24 budget to actuals by fund uh, as of September 12th, 2024, and an acknowledgement of the 2023-24 contingency budget to actuals by fund as of September the 12th, 2024. 20, uh, 33 is juvenile director's report on detention population. And, Good morning, judge and commissioners. We have 35 juveniles in detention. 
29 males and nine females, and we have 24 on electronic monitors. Thank you, Linda. 34 shirts report on inmate population. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. We have 802 this morning. 802. 802. 669 men, 133 women, and 44 are on monitors. Okay. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> number 35 is announcement of interest items and possible future agenda topics. And I'd like to get Jim Stewart and Shannon Co it didn't Co add up. There you are. I want you to introduce our new emergency uh, management director. Judge, good morning. Thank you. Uh, Judge Peters knows I never miss an opportunity to get up in front of a uh, podium and a <laughs> microphone. So he's asked me to introduce our new EMC to you today and kind of go through some of the process that we went through to identify Shannon. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Our predecessor as emergency management coordinator was Michelle Mead. Michelle Mead and I have been friends for well north of 20 years. We worked closely together prior to my coming on board, getting hired by the county, by the sheriff's office, where I served for uh, eight years. And then for ever since then, uh, the commissioner's corps has been kind enough to throw projects my way to work on so I can stay involved with Brazos County and so I can continue to do good things for the citizens and the court for Brazos County. So my most recent project was helping uh, HR, Jennifer Salazar and her team identify candidates for the emergency management coordinator's position. Uh, we started off last February where we rewrote the job description, trying to kind of bring it up a bit, as I like to say, into the 21st century with a lot of the responsibilities that are a little different than they were back in the past and get our EMC away from being a first responder to more of a manager and executive leader. And uh, that's how the job description was rewritten. So Jennifer uh, pushed it out to the world and we got responses from 43 applicants from around the United States. So Jennifer and I got together and her staff and with help from others and created a matrix that we could use to identify of those 43 candidates, those who need to be further interviewed to find the best person for the job. Once we had completed that, there was a weighted scale based on their experience and education and other items, and we brought it that 43 down to 11 contenders. And of that 11, my first task was to do a telephonic interview with those 11 and winnow that down, maybe to 11 or maybe down to three or whatever it might be, but that was my task. So of the 43, we identified 11, seven of those responded when I said, we'd like to take your application to the next level. So of that seven, I conducted a telephonic interview based on their schedule, my schedule, and I sent them all the questions I was gonna ask ahead of time. So there was no gotchas. They knew exactly what I was gonna ask them before we got on the telephone together. And then from that, we winnowed it down to four actual viable candidates in our mind that we wanted to take to the next step, and that was a Zoom interview. So there was an interested group that Michelle Me, the judge, Ed Bull, Jennifer Salazar, me, and others that interviewed this group of four and came up with our leading candidate, which was this young woman standing next to me here today, Shannon Covey. Shannon has a very diverse background. It's, it's a bit unusual in that it's not all public sector. She has a lot of private sector experience, public sector, sector, and also non-governmental organizations. So, uh, the judge and his crew felt like Shannon is probably the best candidate for this job. If you'll remember that emergency management coordinators, nobody thinks about them. The judge thinks about them. The judge is the emergency management director for the county. This is his emergency management coordinator. But she's out of sight, out of mind. But when does she come in mind? When something happens. Most recently, we all lived through the COVID pandemic and all those emergency management coordinators that live and work in the CEOC and the old Warworth building downtown, because they had a relationship and because they'd all come together, we were able to respond 
much better than many other counties in the state of Texas. And we were able to take care of our citizens. So for the 2020, we worked closely as a vaccine was being developed. Once the vaccine was developed, uh, the county put together the vaccination hub and then Trad was the incident commander for that. And he administered 102,000 doses of vaccine in the seven months that the hub was in operation before we started pushing the vaccine out to everybody. So these are the kinds of things that your emergency management coordinator does for you. And so Shannon's job is to think about that, build plans for that, build relationships with our partners, the two cities, the university, the nonprofits, the volunteers. They were all part and parcel of anything that might happen here in our community. These are the folks that are going to respond to that. So I was very pleased. Uh, with Shannon's selection because I got to look at all these files. I got to talk to a lot of these people and of that bunch I believe that Shannon was the best fit for our, our community. So Judge Shannon, would you like to say? Oh, well, I just want to say okay. no speaking good to morning. the mic. I'm here to the microphone. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. And good morning to all of you. I am so honored and privileged and it is such a pleasure to serve this community. I am beyond excited about that and I can attest that it was I went through a car wash <laughs> with the process and I just feel it just an, a tremendous honor so I'm ready to get started um, I started on September 9th I moved I can attest to using a 10-foot U-Haul uh, and my car behind it on a trailer and 14 hours drive time to get here so I'm here I started on the 9th and I'm getting it in full swing so it's a pleasure to meet all of you and I, get, I look forward to one-on-ones and uh, serving you as a whole so thank you again thank you Welcome. Shannon man. we're very happy to have you on board looking forward to great things and uh, you and I know it'll happen because I've, uh, you know, in my discussion with you, you've got lots of great ideas. So thank you for actually accepting the position. Thank you. Yeah, let's let's hope that all your preparation and uh, <laughs> for what could happen and, and, and being there when it, and it might uh, is just preparation. We hope you're bored and, uh, and, and planning a lot. And but but with chiefs uh, input and and your reputation we're glad to have you here ditto mm -hmm. judge I also yeah. wanted to just okay. extend uh, condolences to the Gutierrez family mayor Bobby Gutierrez his mother Yolanda Gutierrez has gone to her reward as of the night before last and just uh, uh, to the city of Bryan to the uh, office of mayor to the large Gutierrez family our condolences are with you and our prayers are with you absolutely okay. yep. Uh, this Thursday, there's a groundbreaking for uh, unlimited potential at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, that's at uh, 1115 Anderson Street and College Station. Up is the organization that supports individuals who have aged out of the foster program. And they turn 18 and they basically become homeless and uh, have no means of support. And this organization helps them. Thank you, Commissioner. Is there any other announcement of interest items? I can't hear you. I was wondering about that math on that. I can't answer that. It's a little bit small, I guess. But we have 35 in detention, but we have 29, let's see, 29 males and seven females is that right no that adds up to 36 i'm sorry it's closer 27 and 8 <laughs> is that is that right that's 35 so, yeah. right <laughs> that adds up i i hope that didn't any, anybody escape out there <laughs> 29 and 27 Thanks, and eight. Twenty-seven and eight. Okay. Thirty-five altogether. Okay. I, I thought she was talking about the sheriff. We will um, move back up into number to, to number thirty and convene an executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code five five one point zero eight seven for deliberation regarding economic development negotiations. And if I can find my 
Well, I, I know it was here, but anyway, uh, we need, uh, of course, the commissioner's court, Cheryl, attorneys, uh, chief of staff. Ms. Roach. Y yes, uh, R Ms. Roach, and then probably budget and audit probably should be in there also. And the time is 10.51. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> we're coming out of executive session. It's 1141, and there's no action to be taken. Next item is to adjourn. Well, we have something to sign here.